come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come. Good morning, church. Welcome to our special COVID-19 edition of the Albright Arterbein United Methodist Church worship service. Our church is suspended right now due to the coronavirus and the governor's stay-at-home restrictions. Even though religious organizations can remain open, it would almost be impossible for us to gather in groups of more than of less than 10. So keep our social distancing and to set a good example that we can worship at home, I'm conducting this worship service from our living room here at the Parsonage on Chestnut Street in Connellsville. So this has to be our new norm for the next uh, several days, the next couple weeks. And so we continue to receive instructions from our government as well as the CDC on how to move forward. Albright's 55 over luncheon is still scheduled, but only for takeout. Bev and I will be making about 50 lunches of sloppy joes and macaroni salad and some cake that will be handed out on the 26th between 11 and 1. Um, you come to the lower door of the church and we'll meet you there. And uh, you can also pick up your candy orders or drop off some candy orders if you haven't gotten any for uh, Easter. Be advised that your local grocery stores and, and Walmarts and are hiring, as well as restaurants are looking for delivery persons at this time. So if you've been displaced from your job, there are places that you can look for to, for temporary work. Also, be sure if, you're, if you've been displaced, sign up for unemployment as quickly as possible. Please continue to support the local businesses that are open so that they can remain open and also respect their distance as well as we get past this health emergency. Also, be very careful. There are telephone and internet scammers out there who prey on people at times like this. So be very careful of emails or uh, requests that you may receive on your social media or telephone calls that are coming in. Let's be patient as we struggle through this together. Christian love can be also spread through your phone calls and your cards and, and your Facebook chats. It's time to show that we can be the body of Christ in our world today. So wash your hands often. Clean your surfaces with disinfectant. Stay at home, especially if you're sick. Practice social distancing. And let's push down that curve so that our healthcare professionals can have a little relief as they're going through this. Please be supportive of them at this time. Now I'd like to uh, come to our time of our call to worship. And Ben's going to put that up on the screen here. And let us join together. Come awake. The light of God is breaking through the darkness. We bless, we bless the, the light. light an unyielding sign of hope in, in times, times of, of trouble. trouble. Do not fear. The love of Christ opens up a space of respite and peace for us. We, we bless, bless this place, a sanctuary of rest. Delight in the gifts of the Spirit, who sets a table of welcome for us. 
surely Surely goodness goodness and mercy mercy have found us here in the house of our Lord, the God of of abounding love. Gentle God, you You shepherd shepherd us us in times of trouble. When When the the way seems dark, dark, you guide guide us safely through. When When we cannot bear to slow down, you show us the wisdom of Sabbath Sabbath rest. In In your presence there is life overflowing, abundant, and free. As As we rest in in your goodness, goodness, teach us, O Lord, to see with your heart. heart. Open Open our eyes to the world beyond our neighborhoods and to your beloved children, both near to us and far. Open Open our hearts to the blessed fierceness of your creation, creation, which sustains us and and yet is more powerful than we we can imagine. imagine. Anoint Anoint us with your spirit of blessing, that that we might be as Christ to to one another in our welcome, compassion, and care. Amen. Amen. Our New Testament reading today will come from the book of Ephesians. As Paul writes this, chapter 5, starting with verse 8. For once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to God. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now at this time, folks, I'm going to ask you to do something while you're watching this on Facebook Live. Think of ways that you can pass the peace. We have to do this social distancing and and this stay-at-home order that has come from our governor. But there are ways that we can reach out and pass the peace of Christ to our neighbors. Use your phones and and call your neighbors and and send cards. What a great way to reach out and say, I'm thinking of you. You could do something like like an old-fashioned letter and send that in the mail. Because the one thing that will keep going is our United States Post Office. Also, you have email, you have text, you have Facebook messages, you have Snapchats. Reach out and say, peace of Christ be with you today. Let's do these things, brothers and sisters, as we uh, continue to try to our best to be the church and worship God this day. Also, at this time, I'm going to ask that you prepare your envelopes. Get your envelopes ready. We recognize that these are difficult times. Here in the church, we are looking for our way to support uh, the community and do the ministry of Jesus Christ. But we need your support to do that. So I'm asking that you prepare your envelopes uh, as a way of um, doing your tithing. And you can send your envelopes to the Otterbein United Methodist Church at 201 Lincoln Avenue in Connellsville, PA at 15425. Or you can send them to the Albright United Methodist Church at 1626 Pittsburgh Street, Connellsville, Pennsylvania, 15425. And if you're out and about, and if you want to just drop your envelopes off, you can drop them off at the lower door at Arterbine. There's a post, there's a uh, mailbox there. You can slip them in the mailbox and also at the mailbox at the office door at the Albright United Methodist Church. Or you can go on the webpage of Albright at www.albrightumcscpa.org and click on the Donate button. And I'm planning on trying to do that today and see if I can navigate that myself and to uh, do my uh, offering that way. But God needs our offerings and we need to uh, take care of one another and to uh, put our offerings out. So with that in mind, let's... uh, Let's sing along with the doxology as uh, Jeannie plays that for us via the uh, web. (laughs) 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. A gracious and loving Heavenly Father, I thank you for the membership of the church. And I thank you for all those who are tuning in on Facebook Live or coming to our website. I pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that as they place their offerings together and send them to the churches, I ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless these offerings today and bless their homes. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon each soul and give them strength, especially during these difficult times. And may we use the offerings that we, that we receive for the good of the church and for the good of your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. At this time we have some special music from our choir who put together their anthems uh, for the next several weeks. And uh, I hope you enjoy the song. Thank you, Dawn and the choir, for putting that together for us. Let's come now and center our hearts to prayer. 
Folks, I'm going to include, uh, ask you to, if you can, if you want to uh, send out prayer requests to me all the time. I'm on Facebook. I'm, uh, you can text me at 724-372-1453 and text your prayer request to me, and I'll be sure to lift those special prayers up uh, during my prayer devotional time throughout the week. Right now, uh, let's center our hearts and, and, and lift a prayer to our Lord. O gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we praise you and give you thanks for this morning and for this opportunity to worship you from our homes. Lord, connect us together through your Holy Spirit and through our hearts of love for one another. Father God, I pray for all of those who are watching, whether they're members of our church or not, it doesn't matter. They're members of your church and your kingdom. And that does matter. And for those who don't have a church or, or even much of a faith walk yet, I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will descend upon them and they'll touch your, their lives and bring them closer to you. Lord, you are needed at this time. There's times and tragedies that bring us to our knees more than anything else. And Lord, as this virus is spread across our globe, we pray, O oh Heavenly Father, for those who have lost lives and loved ones. And we pray for those who are yet to lose loved ones because of it. Lord, we are thankful. Thankful for your peace that surpasses all understanding and thankful, oh, Heavenly Father, for those that you have still in the service industries of our nation who are taking care of making sure the stocks, the shelves are stocked and that product is moving. Thankful for those who are in delivery services and restaurant workers who are still preparing food for us. We're thankful, Lord God, for truck drivers and, Lord God, for people who are caring for our parents and grandparents in nursing homes. We're thankful, oh, Heavenly Father, for our doctors and nurses and care workers in our hospitals who are out there testing and working. And we're thankful, Lord God, for our military who are now uh, being called to step forward and, and to serve us in this capacity as well. This place from their work and looking for, looking for jobs. We're praying, O oh, Heavenly Father, for those who are grieving at this time for their broken hearts. Lord God, there are so many things that we need to lift to you this morning. Elmas that we don't know anything about, but you do. Lord God, let us turn to you in a moment of quiet, that you may listen to our heart's prayer. And as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. Our next scripture reading today is from 1 Samuel chapter 15. No, chapter 16, starting with verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the, Be the Bethlehemite, and I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourself, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliah, and thought, Surely the Lord uh, the Lord anointed is now bef before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance, or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse named Shema, passed by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said no to Jesse. The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Folks, I have several different uh, sermon helps that I use throughout the week to put together sermons for Sunday. One of them is called homiletics, and its title for the scripture for this week is was Profiles in Courage. Now, of course, when they put out their publication, it's written long before this time has come upon us when we are needing people to step up in courage. When asked what courage was, Ernest Hemingway said it's Courage is grace under pressure. He originally said that it was guts is grace under pressure, but when asked what guts meant, he said it meant courage. Courage is grace under pressure. And that's what we're looking for in today's society, in today's homes. We're looking for folks to step up and show courage, to show grace under this time of pressure. Senator John Kennedy once wrote a, a book he titled Profiles in Courage, and it contains stories about people who responded with courage and, and grace under pressure. I was reminded, and I picked up uh, 
this out of my library yesterday, and this is a, a Patriot's Handbook. It was written by uh, President Kennedy's daughter, Carolyn Kennedy, and she actually didn't write it. She, uh, she composed some of the songs and poems and stories and speeches and, and legal decisions that were passed down that make America what it is. And I encourage anybody who, who enjoys history and enjoys the investigating what our nation's all about and what our founding fathers and, and people before us have written and spoken about to pick up that, a copy of that book. It is really fantastic to read. But as I was looking at people that I found that show that grace under pressure, I, I again went through my library and I came across the story of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a a Lutheran minister who was called into his service, living here in the United States in the 1930s as a teacher who grew up in Germany and saw what the Nazi party was doing to his nation, decided to go back to Germany and to preach the word of Jesus Christ and the truth of Christ's love amidst the time of hatred and, and disunion. Bonhoeffer would la later be a, uh, arrested because he supported the effort to assassinate Adolf Hitler, and he served out most of the remainder of the war in a prison camp, and yet during that period of time, he, will, he walked and carried himself as a child of God until he was hung at the end of the war. Another profile in courage I found was John McCain, uh, the senator from Arizona who had been shot down in a POW in Hanoi, during the Vietnam War. And even though his family had connections and his father was an admiral, he could have been let free and, and set out to uh, set back home, but McCain remained. And even though severely wounded, he remained with his, his fellow POWs and stayed there for the length of the war. I'm reminded of Lyndon Johnson, a Southern Democrat from Texas who stood up and said, look, we got to straighten things out here in this country. We got to give people of all color their rights and started uh, passing legislation for the civil rights movement. It cost the Democrat party the South forever, but it was the right thing to do. And Johnson showed courage in doing so. Of course, we know of our 9-11 responders, firemen and policemen who rushed to the fire and rushed into the buildings in the midst of the, those uh, tragic, uh, on that tragic day. And we saw their courage. We also saw the Coptic Christians who would not turn from their faith, even though it meant death at the hands of ISIS. There are people who were under tremendous pressures, and you probably can name some right now, people that you even know, people in your own families and homes who responded with grace. Courage, folks, is... No, doesn't mean that you're not afraid. Bravery comes by facing your demon, facing what you fear, and moving forward. Saul acted as a person showing courage. In chapter 16, it begins with God asking Saul, how long are you going to grieve? Not asking Samuel, how long are you going to grieve over Saul? I rejected him as king over Israel. And then he instructs him, Samuel, I need you to go to Bethlehem, to the Jesse, because one of his sons I'm going to anoint as a king. And Samuel says, how can I go? If Saul hears of this, he's going to kill me. He, will not, he knew that Saul would not hesitate to remove him as, and uh, take his life. But I love God, and, and, and God has a way of, helping us in, in our journeys. He comes up with a cover story. He says, take a heifer with you and go to sacrifice. He didn't tell him to lie. He told him to take a heifer and go and sacrifice. And that would be enough for Saul. And so Samuel went out and believing that God was with him, he took a leap of faith and he headed to Bethlehem. Folks, during this period of time, we are being asked to take leaps of faith, to act in courage to obey what the CDC and what our government tells us to do, to stay home, to be on our couches and, and uh, 
going for walks in the neighborhood, keeping our social distances. Shouldn't be that hard to wash our hands every day. Yet, folks, there are people who are still serving us out there who are stepping out in courage every morning. Think about your police officers and your firemen who will still respond to a call if you're in danger. There are postal workers going around our neighborhoods and they're delivering your mail. There are delivery drivers. There's truck drivers who are out there. Uh, folks in store clerks, mechanics, restaurant workers, nursing home uh, care people, and of course our healthcare workers all on the front line doing their best to help us even though they are in danger of being exposed to this coronavirus. Folks, these are people that uh, many of us would have taken for granted at one point, and now we don't. Let's keep remembering that when this coronavirus is passed, that all people are of great worth and all service to us is something that should be acceptable and admired. Oh yeah, I left out the trash workers. Yeah, let's give them an attaboy while we're at it. These people are working in courageous efforts today. They're taking leaps of faith, many trusting in God's protection. Let's keep them in our prayers. See, God will provide a way. He just doesn't say to Samuel, go and anoint for me a new king, and good luck with that. God provides a way for Samuel to keep the suspicion down. And with God's help, he stepped out in courage, and he moved forward as God instructed him to do. And when he came... He came into Bethlehem. He was greeted by the leaders of the, of the town. And they came out and they said, do you come peaceably? They knew that Samuel was coming in a time when there was a great bit of political unrest in the nation. Israel was just as divided then as we are here in this nation today between red states and blue states and Republicans and Democrats and, and traditionalists and progressives. But Samuel says peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And so he invites Jesse and his sons to the sacrifice as well. You could say that Samuel is coming to be in the presence of the people of Bethlehem to show that God's peace was with him. He's not there to stir up trouble. He's not there to make the situation worse in people's lives. And that's something I think all of us could uh, hold on to during this period of time is ways that we can stop from stirring up the trouble, but to bring words of peace and greeting and love to show the Christian heart. Whenever we practice our faith today, we are often challenged to go into our, our polarized society and sacrifice to the Lord. As Samuel did say, and to sanctify ourselves. Folks, we are being asked at this time, and I'm asking you to get a hold of your Bibles and, and read your scriptures and sanctify yourself to God. Sacrifice a part of yourself to God. When we gather to worship, we always confess our sins. We hear the word of God, we pray for ourselves and others, and we celebrate the sacrament. Let this gathering today be a time where we can act peaceably respecting our brothers and sisters, no matter where they stand in our social or political spectrum. This is a time for us to pull together. Our Christian faith does have political implications because we have our moral standards and issues that shape our choices as individuals. There are folks out there right now that are practicing their faith and taking on some of our their nation or or. Uh, political stances, and we need to listen and, and see how we can be supportive. And we need to stand up, and we need to do things today to make sure that our neighbors are cared for. You know, the food program was stopped at the Connellsville School District, uh, the handout of uh, lunches, and for the safety sake of, of our community. Yet, Lord, yet these people really are these children are still in need of food. So Connellsville uh, Community Ministries is trying to step up and, 
and make that happen. And some of our local businesses are making that happen. Our restaurants, and they need that support. And they don't have a, a government uh, uh, support uh, from our state government to provide those lunches. They're gonna need the support of the community. And I'm not uh, dissing on the school district or anything like that. I know that they're making the decision to, uh, for their workers and their, their people as well. And, but folks, as a community, we need to pull together here. We need to take care of our, our kids. We need to make sure that there's food and diapers and baby wipes for, for families. Um, and we also need to uh, look after our elderly and make sure that they're cared for and call on them and, and make sure they have food and essentials and, and toilet paper, things like that. Folks, this is a time for the church to pull together. It's not a time for the church to separate. And I'm going to speak only, only for myself. I think that the, the protocol for the church's separation is something that needs to be tabled. And I think that the church needs to pull together and find a way forward without separating. We need to pull together at this time, people. Not just through this coronavirus, but this is, be, should be showing us how strong the church can be when we act as God calls us to, as his children. Samuel took each one of those sons of Jesse, and he listened to God speak to his heart. And first he saw Eliab, and he looked at him, and he saw how big and strong, strong he was and handsome. He says, surely this must be the one that God has chosen. But God says, don't look at the outward appearance. I'm looking at something much deeper. And that's what God does. He looks at the deeper part of us just doesn't look at how how good looking we are hey not everybody can rock this haircut right so then he looked at uh at abinadab he says no to him and then he goes forward uh, shema and nathanael and ozam and radai and he said no to all of them and finally he says there's none of your children left he said i have one my youngest the kid out in the field who is tending the sheep and when he comes in, he's ruddy and he has handsome eyes. And God said, this is the one, anoint him. And David is anointed and the spirit of God falls upon David. And from that day forward, he walked with the Lord. You know, in chapter 17, we get that great story of David. He's going to face a giant. He's going to face Goliath. And God's power was upon him. And with a single rock, he slew the giant, Goliath. This COVID virus it's a giant right before our eyes today. But if we do what we're being asked to do, we can slay this giant. We can slay it and we can help our health care workers and the people of our community in, by distancing ourselves and allowing this time of sickness to pass. Folks, our, our parents were asked to do grant your grandparents and parents were asked to do a lot more than what we're being asked to do. Back at the, our, uh, my parents lived through the Great Depression. Uh, there were people who lived through the Dust Bowl. They lived through the Great World War II. And even the kids who didn't go off to uh, serve in the military stayed at home and they collected metal and and rubber and nylon and took it to recycling places that were turned into the war effort. Your, your grandmothers left the kitchens and went and worked in shipyards and factories. Folks, we can do this. We can pull together. I remember during that period of time as well, there was rationing because there were people who were trying to take advantage of that system too. So hopefully we don't have to come to the point that we have to ration toilet paper. People, we can get through this together. We can do it because God is with us. He doesn't send us out and say, just, just go and wing it. He's saying, go out and be my church. Be my children. And reach out to the, reach out with your, with love and care for one another. I'm going to close my sermon this morning telling you, asking you to please just look out for one another. Take care of one another. Check on your neighbors. And let's be courageous. We can get through this. We can get through this. Let's close today, and I'm going to sing the hymn.
shine, Jesus shine. And I wish I had some, I wish I was musical, but uh, I'm not. So just sing along with me at home as we close out our service. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill the land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence. From the shadows up into your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all this darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze, and set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance, give you peace, and may he keep you safe for these, through these very strange and changing times. All glory to God today. Amen.